Timur Birijnoi with speech titled The Tales of Birijnoi. The Tales of Birijnoi. Last Sunday, Tsvaya Robashka, I was again asked my favorite question. Do you know which one? When are you going to get married? No. <laughs> Why are you still not married? <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> Dear Toastmasters, today you will hear the answer to this question. <laughs> there is an opera called The Tales of Hoffman. Hoffman was a famous fairy tale writer. And the opera tells us about the three big loves of his life. But neither of the three was successful. The first girl left him with a dwarf, the second one died, and the third one happened to be a mechanical doll. Cool story, isn't it? I, just like him, also had three girls in my life <coughs> to whom I declared love. That's why today you will hear the tales of Birjnoi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. The first girl was called Isa. When we met, we were both 21. I was a poor teacher of English, and she was a very good pianist. She played for top singers and worked at the National Opera. She was beautiful, successful, and independent. And from the first sight, she even seemed to like me. But then, I got into a deep friend zone. <laughs> she was always busy for me. We met about once in two weeks, kissed on the cheek, and it was during half a year. <laughs> Finally came the 14th of February, and she agreed to meet with me on that day. I presented her flowers and the gold chain, took her to an expensive restaurant, coffee house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for me at the time it was expensive. I wanted to create a fantastic atmosphere, took her home by taxi, and when we said goodbye, for the first time, I kissed her. It was heavenly. It was fantastic. It seemed to me our souls were communicating, and time stopped. But in fact, all that lasted just one second. Then she ran away. Ran away! Two weeks later, I met her at the opera house, and she didn't even want to talk to me. <laughs> Finally, I understood that Asya didn't love me. <laughs> Four years later, actually after I said I didn't think I would love anyone, but I met a girl, another one, who came to my voice training, she was called Inna. And that I at once noticed that she was special. All the first date, she asked me provocative questions about myself. And it was cool. She was in fact a very deep person and very mature, more mature than me. She liked yoga and philosophy, but at the same time she was charming and funny and intriguing. Like to keep the intrigue until the last moment. Will she go to the date with me or no? <laughs> made me worry and made me fall in love with her. With her Jaconda smile, her soft voice, her deep eyes. But she smoked. <laughs> it was terrible for me. I worried about her health. I tried to make her quit smoking. But she didn't quit smoking. She quit me. <laughs> of course, I understand I acted in the wrong way at that time, and I tried to return her, but it was useless. However, last summer, my life changed. I came to a French-speaking club, and I met a son. A real shining sun, a girl with blonde curly hair, big dark eyes, and an enchanting smile. The son's name was Natasha. <laughs> and we liked each other from the first sight. We talked the whole club meeting only between us, and after the meeting, and the next day after the meeting. Later, she even dedicated a poem to the moment we met, and to me. Nobody had ever dedicated to me a poem. She was an angel. However, one evening, five weeks later, Natasha was different. She told me everything was fine, but I understood something was wrong. Next morning, she left, kissed me goodbye, and never came back. <coughs> she 
didn't answer my calls, and three days later she wrote me an SMS that it was over between us. Only at that moment I understood how deeply I loved her. I came to her job with a bunch of flowers. I told her I loved her and wouldn't let her go. But she said she was already dating another guy. <laughs> and what's most important, she felt nothing for me. You have heard my tales. <coughs> just like Kaufman, I lost the three loves of my life. And just like him, I stayed alone with my muse. The Hoffman's muse accompanied him in all his adventures. And my muse helps me too. When I teach, when I write a speech, when I give a speech, she's here now. Can you sit? Can you sense her? And with her, my loneliness doesn't actually seem so lonely. <coughs> loneliness, I would say, it's not such a bad thing. It allows you to think, to analyze your life, your mistakes, to enjoy the silence. Even though it's so much better to enjoy the silence with someone by your side with whom it's so sweet to keep silence together. And if I meet that someone, if I love for the first time, I will dedicate my whole self to that girl. I will love her with her advantages and disadvantages, and I will appreciate each moment spent together, each kind look, each smile, each touch of hands and if there is no tomorrow. And unlike Hoffman's, my muse will not be jealous because she will know that I'm in good hands. My name is Master.